I don't exactly know where to begin. Just because, I mean, I have so many projects right now. <laughs> it's a good problem. It's a good problem. Um, I applied, I'm part of this group of Lion Brand. Now that, I mean, I've kind of been inducted into it now that I've started my first kit. And um, by the time this is released, I will have had a second kit. And who knows what will happen in between then. Um, it's been thrilling. It's been nerve wracking too. I am enjoying it. Lion Brand is an incredible company. I love all of their yarns. I just can't stop smiling. So I received an email about the opportunity to do part, to be part of the Christmas promo. And who would say no to that? I mean, duh, I have to do it. I do love Christmas. And um, I just started to brainstorm. And obviously garments are really my thing now. And I saw, I've been told before too, because like during the winter seasons, I always wear this purple robe that I have and it is getting pretty old. So I would like to have something newer and I have yet to find another robe that I like just as much to replace it. So Lion Brain used to have this yarn that was like teddy bear like, and it's boucle but they've discontinued it, is what I learned when I submitted this design. So I'm designing a robe, if you didn't catch that. And it got accepted to be part of this promo, which obviously you know because this video is out. So um, I got the yarn a while back. I barely opened it to peek in it. Um, it was suggested to me to try this one with the robe and I was skeptical, but my friend Nikisi with Cosmic Crochet Creations, she has used this yarn on a jumper or cardigan like thing and um, shared a picture with me and I was like, I think I can visualize it. It fills in a lot and let me just show you. This is it. <laughs> Lion Brand Homespun. <laughs> it is a bulky five weight. Um, it recommends to use for crochet a 6.5 millimeter or for knit a six millimeter, which by the way, this is going to be a knit kit. I would, I am interested in possibly trying a crochet version also. So we shall see how this goes and maybe I can replicate the shaping for crochet also. Um, I feel like it's probably not near as soft as what the boucle would be, but I have known when I've worked with this before, once it's all made up and once it's washed, it's very drapey and like, well, not necessarily drapey, but very soft and plush, which is great for winter. I'm sure it will be drapey because of the knit. It's probably less drapey in crochet. But I'm going to start off with swatching it with a six millimeter just because that's the suggestion. And I have all intentions of doing a garter stitch. And I'm really excited to design something with bulky. Although I've never really considered this much of a bulky. I've considered this more of a worsted. I guess um, with the texture of it, as it layers against each other, it kind of becomes a bulky. So maybe that's why they say it, I don't know. I will say, okay, if you've never designed before, it is very weird to come up with like a yardage estimate. So when I submit for the kit, I also have to submit like a yarn request. And I, I ended up getting 
eight balls and it is or eight skeins and there is 185 yards in each so hopefully it's enough I think that I I think that I submitted for more than what I needed which is always what you want to do as a designer but I usually try and look at maybe other options on Ravelry to get like a rough estimate of what I would need. If I have the yarn, I will try and swatch it then and then um, come up with like a stitch idea and then come up with the yardage on, like a rough yardage on what that would be, um, just as I would while I'm writing the pattern. But I didn't have this yarn in my stash. I've used it before, but I just didn't have any in it currently. So I went ahead and went on Ravelry and searched for like long cardigans, long knit cardigans. And I don't know yet if I'm going to make it long or if I'm going to make it like calf like. I also have another robe that um, is shorter. It's actually not calf, like thigh height. I think that's how long my other robe is. I am gonna try for pockets. I haven't decided if I want the pockets to be on the outside or if like I wanna put the pocket inside where the seam is and then whenever you wrap the robe across like this, then I could put my hands in the pockets like this. But that also makes me wonder because when I make a, um, like a, a tie, how it's gonna tie and still be able to use the pockets. I don't know yet. I know that I think I want the tie to be like a ribbing, just one by one probably. I have a bag and um, the the strap is made like a one by one ribbing and it's very secure. It doesn't have much stretch to it so I like the idea of that. I think that I'm going to construct this from the bottom up. I really would like to, um, like do, I, I normally do like panels, or lately that's what I've been designing by panels, and then um, like adding the sleeve after it's all put together. I'm thinking I'm gonna do bottom up and then make like two slivers, so, th and so the back panel goes up and two front panels go up. No something like that yeah I could do that but I also was thinking of like when I come up from the body adding the sleeve like making the sleeves first then adding the sleeves in and then just working the top but I don't know how that would work I've done that in a sweater that's all in the round but I've never done that in like a cardigan style. I don't know, I think I'm gonna brainstorm a little bit more on that, but I do wanna swatch and make sure I know what needles I can do and then look at the texture of what the garter stitch is gonna produce. I really would like to just be a knit, 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 knit through the whole freaking thing. That would be so good for you and me. So let's start this journey, I know that my words are all wacky, but it's like a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo in my head. And I feel like that's just how designing goes. So it's hard for me to relay that into words for you. I'm also not very good at drawing. So that makes it hard for me when submitting for the designs. And I also think that's something that I'm probably gonna develop as my skills improve with this designing journey. I mean, it's still new for me. So thanks for watching and following along and being patient with my journey. I am pretty exhausted from the day, but um, I've decided that it's finally time to get started on this project. I already got my needles ready because I had plans to get to it today. I got them ready this morning, but now it is 10.48 at night. <laughs> what a good time to swatch, right? 
Um, it suggests to use six millimeters, but I am gonna try eight millimeter because I wanna use garter stitch and garter stitch I feel like creates a very dense fabric because it's all layered together. So here we go and seeing how it is. I might revert back to the six millimeter, but also it's a bulky and I feel like the larger needles will help make the project go by quicker. Okay, so late last night, last minute, I decided to switch to a nine millimeter just because like, I felt like this was kind of thick and I don't know what kind of drape that's gonna give and how heavy that might get when the whole garment is made. But I really am loving the stretch and the lightweight quality of the nine millimeter versus the eight millimeter. I thought about maybe trying a 10 millimeter too, but I don't wanna make it too inaccessible for needle sizes. I'm not quite sure what everybody has in their set. I know that's the last size that I have in my set. So now I'm going to frog this and retry my gauge swatch to get my math right. Because naturally, I went ahead and wrote the entire pattern last night based off of the original gauge of the eight millimeter, did all the math, and I don't wanna do the eight millimeter. So now I gotta retry with the nine millimeter. It'll be all right. I am at the racetrack designing away, getting all kinds of questions asked, but most people are usually pre pretty familiar with me always having yarn. It's like 91 degrees out here, according to Instagram at least. Like the normal weather channel usually is not along the same lines as what Instagram thinks it is. I hope you can hear me. Anyway, I did the math for the new needles along the way on the drive here and now I am just knitting away. I think this is gonna be a nice, beautiful, breezy design for a maker, a knitter to make because robes don't have like a lot of shape and they have a lot of ease. So I think that this is just gonna be nice to say, hey, this is your stitch count. You stitch up to this row or this size and or till it hits this point and then go to the next thing and do it again and before add some sleeves and before you know it like you're there you got a row so i'm excited about it like this is a great project in my head right now i haven't made the whole thing yet but in my head right now this is a great project to take around with you and there aren't a lot of knitting projects that are because live stitches are stressful and because you usually have to count a lot. So, plus the bulky yarn. This is probably gonna be pretty beginner friendly actually for knitting wise. I hope y'all love it. And I hope I love it. well the sound will go maybe I should put my headphone in but I wanted to show this is what two skeins of the homespun makes and I'm really enjoying it last night last night I um, basically use this thing as a blanket which is freaking awesome okay a lot going on here at the racetrack um 
last night I used this as a blanket and it is very weird to be working on a winter project in summer. Like it feels like a hundred degrees outside and it's a hum like super high humidity. But it got a little bit rainy last night so I was able to get like a little chilly because I wore shorts. So it was nice to be able to have this on my lap. And I am enjoying that it's like all knit. So I love the texture of the garter. I am finding that the yarn is shedding a bit, but it's all right. And I imagine whenever I wash it, it'll be just fine. I've used homespun before and it was very durable and the squish effect is incredible. The halo is lovely. It just makes, gives it and makes it have a whole cozy vibe, which is perfect for like the holiday season, right? Uh, I think I had something else to say, but yeah. Okay, so the body part, it's like knitting, knitting, knitting. You can make this part as long as you want to. Um, obviously, I'm gonna give like a row count or a measurement count, but if you wanted to go floor length with your robe, you're plenty capable of doing that for you. It just, you just might need to get some more yarn outside of the kit. Which is nice because homespun is an affordable yarn. I guess this is getting to be a project that is just an on the go whip. It is basically the story of my life, but um, it's good for you to know that this is nice to take around with you and it's doable. So I just, um, I don't know how many rows it's been, like maybe five I don't know something like that on the back where I've added in a new skein I'm on my fourth skein now I did like the front the first front panel and I'm not digging that shape right there like look at that slant that's a little bit too severe and I don't know how it's gonna it just looks like it's gonna be very misshapen when I go to add the sleeves. So I'm gonna have my first frog on here and I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more gradual so that it will be better when I do the three needle bind off for these sides and it's not gonna be like that little jagged edge in the sleeve, cause that's a little weird. I know it's kind of hard to see in this, but it's so cool. I'm loving it. It's very, very cozy. Okay, so I'm digging the way that this side has ended up being. It's way more gradual of a decrease. It does create like a deeper V here. Um, I went ahead and took the other side off of the needles and then I picked up the stitches down here where the split is. It's really hard to show like this, not on a flat surface. Um, and now I will just yank it out to where I picked up those stitches and then start anew there. Y'all will never believe the dumb mistake that I've made. I have to frog both sides basically. Well, I already did the one side you saw because I forgot my own design element. The back stitches already match the two panels of the front stitches. So I didn't need a decrease anyways.
It's like a nice little vest. I love it. I made like the armholes a little bit too long, I feel like, because it's right at the waist here. So I'm not sure if that's how I'm gonna leave it. And also, it made it go down to like my calf where I was trying to go for right below my knee. She's making herself a comfy spot. Um, either way, I'm loving it. I do feel like, okay, so if I put the belt here, then I'll cinch in here. It's really okay. It, Cause if I move it up here, let me see. My armholes. I feel like you want a baggy fit in a robe. So I could take some rows out up here. I feel like the weight must have pulled it down some. Then that would give me the knee length there, a more proper sleeve, and then the belt cinches in here with this, like no puckering. Yeah, I am feeling like I might take the rows out on the top here. All that work that I just did. It's all right, it's all right. But I just don't feel, cause like I feel like I'm gonna have to do a lot of shaping in an armhole if it's this big. Now she's gonna ruffle up the other carpet. Anyway, I always think, ooh, I'm gonna say a lot of things when I come on the camera. And then I just get so distracted. <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty happy about the way this is going. Homespun is like an underdog of lion brand yarn, but I feel like it's so cozy. It's gonna be great for winter, but for right now it's like, whoo, it's super hot, but it does have a really nice squish effect. And it's nice that all of this is knit. Knit, 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 knit. No pearls. Love it. <laughs>
couple inches left on my second sleeve. So now I'm gonna join another skein of yarn. Then I'll get my sleeve back on, back on, my second sleeve on, and try it on again. Stoked, so stoked. Okay, I have been at this robe still. Um, I just haven't really been documenting the last few stages that I've done. Cause I just feel like I wanna be like, kapow, it's done. But I guess that's not the point here. Um, I have made both the pockets. I kind of made like another little double brim area on the top so that it's easy for your hand to go in and it holds up, you know, doesn't curl. And I also have made the belt. Love, love, love it. It's pretty sturdy. This is the only time that you'll do any purling is in the belt. Otherwise, everything is knit. And then I have done, like I have picked up the collar and I have done some short rows up here. And now I, and I'm just knitting even back and forth around. Where's the edge? Here's the, where the two meet. So actually the short rows are on this side. Oop, on this side. Um, but now I am adding in a new skein. So I think that makes me on five or six, six. Cause I have two left still and I had ordered eight. Um, so yeah, I'm on six skeins right now and I think that's what I'm going to stick to. I don't know how much of this collar I'm going to do. I'm thinking, um, maybe five more rows just cause I want to use a little bit more of this skein, um, which will leave a little bit extra in case anybody wants to lengthen the body. For, like if you want calf length I'm trying to go for knee length I don't know how the weight is gonna pull it but um yeah I am loving it every time I put it on it's so cozy obviously I haven't gotten to put it on since the collar and I'm really thrilled to be hopefully binding off tonight to see how that collar fits and I sure hope I don't have to frog it that's one thing that sucks about knitting. I can't just like do rows, then try it on and then see like, yeah. Cause it's too much work to put it on a new cord. Actually, I probably could invest in some extensions to extend a longer cord. So then when I get to the end, I could just have like longer cording to be able to try it on. Maybe after this kit goes live, I will buy some extensions. I have the chow goo needles and I love that. So I, I mean, I'm ready to get some accessories for it. Okay, I am on the last few stitches of binding off. So I figure I would share this exciting moment. And also moment of truth like how it's going to fit okay i'm like scared to snip it off but i'm gonna go ahead and do it okay 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 let's see what it looks like here Look at that short row action there. Oh, I freaking did it. That is amazing. Oh my God. If this doesn't look like a robe. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Freaking goodness. 
It's a little bit crinkly there. Maybe I don't need to put, I don't know, I kind of like it crinkly though. Okay, I'm gonna have to take a picture. <sighs> Okay, I think I'm hitting a little bit of my first snag-ish. Um, these, this collar area is getting a bit of a ruffle. Like, I have too many stitches. I can't do it on each row. Like, it should be every other row. So, it's making like a point there because I feel like this part, the garter needs to grow here. But I'm not really sure how that will wash. And since it's acrylic, it's not really like a blocking thing. And I want it to be durable. So I usually just throw my acrylic in the wash regular. So um, this yarn, since it gets like that when it's left out, I'm going to go ahead and weave it in and then wash it and hope to God that it works out. But... Um, Let's show you what it's like whenever with this um, belt. I haven't got the pockets on yet either. I feel like I need to attach um, the belt and the pockets after washing it because I'm not fully sure how that's gonna set. So I want the pockets to be like right here. Some people put their pockets low, like where their hands just fall right in, but I like my pockets to be up a little bit. So I want them to be right here and I want to be able to tack the back belt in the middle here um, so we don't have to worry about any loops and then they can just dangle while not in use if you're not going to wrap them and it could be like cardigan like. Um, that's what I do with my other robe that's similar. But I love how this worked up, this collar here and the short rows. Oh my god, I can't believe I did that. It's freaking crazy. I think as far as other sizes, I'll only have to really adjust width, like for circumference wise, because I got my um, mother-in-law to try it on, and she's like a double X. And so that was the only thing, is like to get the wrap around, it needs more fabric. So I think the sleeve wise is fine for everybody. That will be fine. Like the width, I think mostly just to get the circumference. And then, so that will probably affect like my neck stitches here. How, how I can get the collar to be wide in between um, the shoulders and your, like basically where your neck is. So um, I think that's the only part I'll need to do some math on. The length and stuff should be okay. The arms should be okay. So, yeah. Maybe the arms might be, the sleeve like lengthwise here might be different because the drop shoulder, I don't know, no, 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 because the way it sits on each body these are the things you have to think about as a designer, you know, because it's easy to design for your own body, but to think about like how it's going to lay on other bodies, it's, um, is where it's a little bit of a struggle, but, um, luckily craft yarn council has a lot of general, um, measurements. I have like a fuzz or a hair. It's driving me nuts. Oh, I see it in the wind or in the uh, words. I see it though. Anyway, yeah, so I guess that's my last battle that I have to deal with. I'm gonna go ahead and weave in these ends and then wash it and then hope that it still looks decent and then I can put, I say decent, it still looks amazing. I love this look. And um, 
then tack the belt on and put the pockets on and then get ready for a photo shoot and then work on my pattern. Yeah. Okay, so I pretty much completed this thing and it's lovely. I washed it, nothing really changed, but it's nice and fresh. And um, I mean, I guess even softer and drapier. Really, it didn't seem like it changed much, but I have come to love the ruffle effect there. Like, I don't want to change that. I really enjoy it. And it kind of comes to the point, like to a point. Oh, I'm standing on my bed so you could see. Seeing right there. I kind of like that element. I put the pockets in. Like I said, I like my pockets to be a little bit higher. So my hands can fit comfortably in there. And I could put my phone in there. Um, sometimes people like them like down to their fingertips, but that's where like it's your own personal customizing that you want to do right there. And then I tacked on that back belt loop right there in the middle. So you don't have to worry about any loops anywhere. Really, you could make one of these and wear it as a cardigan if you wanted to. Um, so then whenever... I strap it in like this. I can tie it. Usually I just do like one little tie when I'm around at home. That's so cute with the little ruffles. But my my like big robe at home, I always like double wrap like this and this is how I tie. Like really like that or like a quick like and it's usually it'll swing like all the way out and it'll be like one loop. So that is so cute. It's super cozy. It is summertime right now. Like, I mean, well over a hundred degrees. And so it's kind of funny to make like a winter item. And I am so stoked about how it will be in the winter, but I'm actually gonna have to make myself another cause I am gonna be giving this to my stepdaughter. But yeah, I love how this neckline is and how it um, just creates this collar and it goes down and you can just tell like, that's awesome. I can't believe that I made that. That's <laughs> incredible. I mean, I'm not like a professional knitter, I would say, but really technically I am. <laughs> I've been knitting for a couple years um, and I've done a lot of advanced skills with it um, or techniques and mastered some skills, but I, it's just weird to think that I am a knitwear designer when I started as a crocheter. I love them both equally now. So, yeah, I just had to show you that it's done. I have like a couple ends to weave in from sewing the pockets in. And now I have to go write the pattern. I mean, I've written some, but I haven't put it in the template. So... Here's to that, and then I'm gonna do a photo shoot this next week. After a few days of this, I am finally done with five pages of my pattern. I am figuring up this yardage from my swatch right now. I even had more notes that I had to write. My nice little scratch scratch. Yay! Today is picture day, and I have driven to my stepdaughter's house, which is like, a little over an hour like well actually it might be closer to two hours to um, get to her house 
but she is a fantastic photographer and it's nice to have somebody else take your picture. So I am taking full advantage of this and I'm getting like three things, three total outfits of pictures and three total makes of pictures. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm not ready yet. I have not put a face on, but I know that they will be fantastic. And I also hit rain the whole way here. So I have my fingers crossed. I'm pretty sure it's headed towards my house. So I think that I drove through it to get here. But this kind of gloomy, cloud-like, overcast weather is perfect for pictures. So I think I'll get a mix of indoor and outdoor. I designed that. <laughs> she, yeah, this is her design. Like, she came up with it. That's so cool. Like, you can buy my kit online. She's like, yeah. <laughs> Plugs. Plugs. <laughs> Plugs. <laughs> Plugs. <laughs> Plugs. <laughs> Here's her card. Oh, <laughs> and she got me snacks. <laughs> 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 in the hospital. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 